up guys welcome to today's video so on today's video i'm going to be using olaplex bond perfector number two as a cutting lotion the reason i love using this as a cutting lotion is it serves two purposes it's great for keeping my sections clean and working through a haircut like any other cutting lotion would be but it's also a bond perfector so it's going to multiply the bonds in the hair and help make the hair stronger as i'm going through the haircut so it's serving the two purposes the other thing about this is it's a good little upgrade so if you're doing a haircut and you put the number two in the hair, then I would charge an extra maybe $10 for that haircut because you're making the hair stronger, you're doing a treatment while you're doing the haircut. So now as we move into the haircut, what I did was I took a parting on the right hand side of the head, followed that right back down center back, uh, right through the crown area, and then right down the center back. And now I'm taking diagonal forward partings about a half an inch at a time uh, throughout the head shape. Now, the other thing I want you to notice in this haircut is how I work with the head shape. Because a lot of people, even though I'm cutting close to the head, as my finger, as you get towards my fingertip, uh, the head shape starts to move away. What that's gonna do is build up weight very quick. So you wanna make sure that you're focused on your elevation throughout the back of the head. Head shape. So realize that underneath the occipital bone, what happens is the head curves in towards the neck in most cases. Then as you go above the occipital bone, it starts to move away. So just be very careful with how you're elevating and how you're building up that weight. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm working on a traveling guide. So I'm working half inch at a time and you want to see that guideline coming through. So quick tip when cutting short hair is to make sure that you stay consistent. Uh, short hair is the hardest thing to cut because you can see all the inconsistencies, the different over directions that you make, uh, the changes that you make in the haircut, you're going to see those shifts in the weight. On long hair, you don't really see those things because the hair is longer. It doesn't sit right on top of itself. But in shorter hair, you're really going to see those inconsistencies. So make sure that every parting is the same width. Uh, the over direction stays consistent, just working all the way through the head shape. Now, the other thing that we're doing is I'm going to work my way all the way through to the division point. So that is from the top crown area down to behind the ear. And that's where I'm going to stop cutting uh, the left hand side. Also notice my elevation and you can see that buildup of weight. So now that the head shape is curving away, you get that buildup of weight uh, in the top crown area, which is actually a good thing. I like having a little bit of extra weight up there. So now you're gonna notice a shift in my finger angle. So now my finger is pointing down. The reason for that is to stay consistent with the way that I comb the hair. Uh, on the left-hand side, I was taking a parting, taking the new hair, pulling it towards my guideline, and cutting it at the guide. Now, if I were to continue cutting the same way I did on the left-hand side, I would now be pulling the new the, the guideline into the new hair, which would shorten that new hair. So then I would end up with one side shorter than the other on the haircut. And that's where a lot of you guys out there might struggle when you cut a bob or you cut different shapes, uh, you get different lengths. So just stay consistent with your combing. So I work my way through uh, in the back. Partings are staying the same, diagonal forward, working through. The other key thing here is to make sure that what I do is I take the top part of the section and I cut it. You're going to want, you're going to think in your mind that you want to start at the very bottom, work your way up. I say it's, I think it stays more consistent uh, when you start at the top, comb, uh, drop the section, and then work your way through. I'll show you guys right here an example. So as I comb that hair out, I would normally, you would think you'd want to start at the bottom. So I start right here at the top cut that through. Then I recomb and I cut towards the bottom. So you can see it just allows me to shift that finger angle to make sure I stay consistent throughout the whole thing and then you get a better line. Now paying attention to the elevation. So now we're in the crown of the head and the head shape is starting to move away. So if I kept everything at the same angle, it'd be way too heavy uh, throughout that crown area. So I wanna pop a little bit of volume. I wanna build up a little bit of weight so it has a nice silhouette uh, on her head shape, but I don't wanna go too heavy to where it's just laying flat and doesn't look flattering. So uh, make sure I keep that balance. I want that weight to hit right above the occipital bone and start to build itself up uh, and that tends to look the best in my eyes. So just finishing up at that division point, like I said, we go right to the division point and then we stop. Now you can see the consistency in the weight, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cross check by going diagonal back. So we cut everything going diagonal forward. So now as I shift diagonal back, I just bring everything out and I'm just dusting the ends. I wanna make sure, check my consistency throughout the cut, 
and just make sure there's nothing crazy going on in there. Um, so if you see something that is really sticking out, then you got to go back and cut it the same way you cut it the first time. Don't cut it all off uh, through it. You can see that little edge there. That's okay. But if you go through and you see something super long sticking out there, you're going to have to go through and readjust it. And there you go. So you can see as I'm working through, just working diagonal back, dusting off those edges. So now we're gonna work down the right hand side. This is the weak side. So what I'm gonna do, I'll do something different on the heavy side, but you gotta separate those two. To me, those are two different haircuts. When you have the weak side and you have the heavy side, you gotta cut them different. You gotta think about them different because one has a lot more density. Think about uh, in the salon, you would not cut somebody with fine hair the same as you would cut somebody with thick hair, right? So same thing with the weak side and the heavy side. So I'm going out, bringing everything straight out from the head. You'll see that slight buildup of weight. The reason that that happens is like we talked about earlier, the head shape is moving away from my hand. So right where my palm is, is gonna be the heaviest point. The elevation is the lowest, but that buildup of weight, you wanna make sure it sits so it's flattering to the face shape. Um, so just making sure I'm going through there, I'll check the weight. I'm gonna leave a little extra weight on this haircut because I want some uh, weight to play with, and I'm gonna go in and do some point cutting at the end of the cut. So notice, traveling guide works through, then when I get to in front of the ear, I'm gonna start to over direct back to uh, a stationary guide. So traveling, traveling, the first two sections, maybe three sections depending on the head shape, and then over directing everything straight back, and then you get that little push of weight in the front. Um, that's gonna help you know, with the the end result, the look that we're going for. So now I'm showing you that there's a lot more weight and density on this. So I'm gonna split this in half right at the parietal ridge. So I split that and I'll twist the top away and then I'll go through and work this side. Now the side will, I'll cut the same as the other side. But then when I go through the top, I'm gonna do more elevation to remove more weight, create more layers and movement. Uh, so that way, uh, I don't have a super heavy side of the haircut and then a super weak side of the haircut. We want everything to sit balanced. So same thing, bringing everything out, traveling guide through, and then over directing everything in the very front when I get there. But you can see that shape starting to build up right behind the ear. That's what I love um, when, when I'm cutting hair is just to be able to start to see that shape unfolding uh, during the haircut. A lot of you guys are interested. Uh, the scissor I'm using is the Mizutani. This is the retro, uh, Blacksmith Fit Retro scissor. Um, thing I like about it, it's got an even handle. So I, I used to cut hair with an even handle scissor all the time. Some of you guys out there like it. Um, I wanted to give it a shot again because I hadn't used one in a long time. I like an even handled scissor in some cases, but other cases I did find it a little uncomfortable because I'm now used to cutting with an offset scissor. So if you guys like even handle, it's a great scissor. Um, but if you like an offset handle, obviously, uh, I would go with something else, maybe the DB20 I love or the Type K uh, scissor from Mizutani as well. Top, I'm working through. Again, over directing everything back and just to the back corner. So it gives me a little bit of an angle, not too much layering, but that over direction is going to push that front nice and long. That will give me some stuff to play with in the end result. So now we're going to move into shampooing and conditioning the hair because the Olaplex uh, Bond Perfector number two is not a conditioner. So you don't leave it in the hair and blow dry the hair that way. So we had it in. It was a treatment that we were doing throughout the entire haircut. Now I'm using Paul Mitchell Invisible Wear uh, shampoo and also conditioner to help build some texture into my cut and also condition add shine and then we're going to use the invisible wear volume whip this is a brand new product from uh, paul mitchell so it's a pretty fun product to use because it's all about texture and just uh movement in the hair and this haircut's really about that as well so uh we got the paul mitchell neuro blow dryer they sent me as well I always love using new brand new tools so we're going to use that blow dryer i'm going to do a flat wrap 
technique with a little bit of leafing uh, throughout the top. So this technique that I'm doing right now is called leafing. So it's lifting up the hair. What that does is it doesn't flatten the base of the hair or the root of the hair. So we wanna build some volume in there. I'm gonna do the same thing in this crown area um, to flat wrap the bottom to make it nice and sleek, but then lift it and leaf it uh, throughout the crown to add that volume in the crown. So it's all about prepping the hair, getting it ready uh, for the style and the cut. So last little bit, remember this is the weak side on the right side, so I did a little bit of leafing there as well to build up some extra volume. So those of you guys that aren't hairdressers that are watching this at home, when you're styling, you wanna make sure, don't do this haircut, go to a salon, get the haircut done. The style part, do a little leafing and that'll help build that volume in. Now we go through undone texture spray. I'm gonna do that right before I iron. It's got a nice light hold to it, builds in some texture, but I'm using the Paul Mitchell Neuro Iron and I'm ironing everything to the opposite side she's gonna wear it. So she's gonna wear it to her left. So I, I iron it and give it a little curve to the right. And then as soon as I comb it over, you can see it's nice and sleek and hugs the head shape. These are the lines that we created wet. So now I'm going in with the Mizutani Puffin. All these scissors are available on freesaloneducation.com if you're looking to upgrade. Uh, there's also some uh, discount codes and stuff on there as well. So go check that out. But this is the Puffin, it's a dry cutting scissor. I'm just going through to soften the line. I'm not trying to change the line. I'm not over elevating the hair to take out a lot of weight. I put that weight there on purpose. I just wanna lighten up the line because the one thing you can't do when you're cutting a line is completely take care of density at the same time. So, uh, so I didn't have to over elevate it. I bring it out, I cut my line, and then I go in dry and I can take out some of that density. So notice the scissor goes in very vertical into the section. That's gonna help keep from making those lines go away. Same thing on the top, I'm over directing everything back exactly the way that I did it in the first place. And now to lighten up the fringe area, what I do is I do some slide cutting. This is with the puffin as well. And then I just flip it out with the iron to end it with some texture. And then I got one more, or actually two more, fun products that I'm gonna use in the hair. This is the Invisible Wear Pump Me Up. This is a pretty fun product to use. It shoots a powder out and it creates a ton of texture. Don't overdo it, start small and work your way up, um, but you just spray it. I like to spray it right at the root and it just pops that volume in. And then I finish it with the Invisible Wear Orbit Hairspray, which had a nice hold to it. It wasn't super firm, but it definitely did the job to keep the hair where I wanted it. So that is the end result uh, for the cut. I hope you guys like it. If you did, let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you watching these videos. Thanks for watching.